Hello everyone, welcome to IV's YouTube channel. Today I will walk you through the step by step process of setting up Spark on Ubuntu operating system in VirtualBox. First, check Java is installed or not. Just running Java space dash dash version command in command prompt. Over here I have already installed Java. If you didn't install Java, just follow the Hadoop installation video. Once the installation is done, open your web browser and search for Apache Spark. Then click on the downloads under spark.apache.org website. After that, choose Spark version and a pre-built Hadoop package with Scala and finally click on download Spark link. In the new page, right click on the first link and copy it then go to command prompt again and write wget space followed by the paste the copied link. After that spark will download it and till now I am skipping this. Once it's downloaded we need to unzip it. Type tar space dash xvzf followed by pasting the downloaded file name. You can check if it's unzipped uh, using the ls command. After that, rename the spark-3.4.2 folder to just spark using the mv command. Now go inside spark folder using cd command, then con folder using cd command. Copy the spark-env.sh template file to spark-env.sh file using cp command. Then edit it using nano command. After that, add hadoop underscore conf underscore dir path. For that, open a new command line prompt and go to hadoop slash etc slash hadoop folder using cd command. Then use pwd command to get the path and copy it. Then paste the copied link over here and paste the same copied link in yarn underscore conf underscore dir path as well. Finally, add one more PySpark underscore python path with python3 you can check it python3 install or not just open a command line prompt and type python3 once it's done save it and open bash rc using nano command Then write the spark path with spark underscore home and spark bin and is bin path. To get spark home path, I open a command line prompt, go inside the spark folder using cd command, then execute pwd command to get the path.
Finally, copy paste all the paths in BIOS RC and save it. Then run source command on BIOS RC to validate the paths. All spark path is set. Now we can run uh, spark using spark dash cell. And you can see that spark cluster is running. If you want to see web UI, then press control and click on this link. You will see the web UI. Now, if you want to run spark with a different master and worker, just write spark dash master dot sh. It will launch the master node. And you can access this web UI from localhost colon 8080. Over here, you can see that there is no worker. To add a worker, just copy the URL of Spark master. Then go to command line prompt and write spark dash slave dot sh space followed by pasted copied link. After that, go back to web UI and refresh the page. You will see one worker is assigned. This way, you can add multiple workers. To stop the workers and master, write the stopped worker.sh and stop that master.sh. Now, if you know Python, this might be a tedious for you. For that, we can use VS Code with PySpark. In Ubuntu, click on Ubuntu Software. Then click on search bar and type VS Code. Click on code then install it. It will ask for password. Give the password and press enter and wait for some time to install. Now again go back to your home and search for BS code and launch it. From top left corner select the file and create a new Jupyter notebook. Then select a kernel from top right corner. First, we need to install PySpark using pip. Once it's done, I import spark session from pyspark.sql and build a spark session in the next cell using builder command. After that, you can execute spark in the new cell and you can see the web UI from it. Now this Spark is ready for processing the data. For the demo purpose, I have one CSV file in my local system, which I will be importing in PySpark using Python pandas and Spark. For that, just copy the CSV file path and go back to your VS Code. In a new cell, uh, write import pandas and create a data frame as DF using pandas and Spark. In the next cell, you can write df.so. It will show the top 10 or top 20 rows of the data frame. That's it for today's demonstration. In the next demonstration, I will show how to connect Spark with HDFS. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial and stay tuned for more videos like this.